Hi guys, this is Tarquin, and we are picking up, not exactly where we left off, but close, and we were waiting outside the Den of Skulls to get a little bit of healing done, and, well, a bunch of Lycian Lyceni came. And so, it has fallen to us to kill them. Mage Mormont, of course, hates being let go in a battle, and now... It will be 698 against 312, and they are not going to have that many quality troops, and almost all of ours are going to be cavalry. We are going to ride them down like dogs, like dogs, I tell you. And I'm pretty sure they're just going to charge at me. No, it looks like they were trying to back up, but we are just going to charge at them. You see the vast bulk of our forces is in that cavalry block. And I am confident that they will crush some stuff when they finally arrive at an enemy. And finally, a first kill. We're going to expect many more kills to follow that, since there are probably close to 40 cavalry in and among them, but... Not able to take out the men we want, and here is one of the lords, and that is who I'm going for. Able to take out Magister Morio Rindun with a thrust of the sword, and what we're going to do now is try to run along the periphery, try to take out some of these men on horseback if we can, these northern knights and the like, and now just cutting them down. That's a reachman there. Osbert Seri is showing up here as well. He is all over the place, Osbert Seri. Constantly losing, constantly still showing up with a lot of troops to his name, and that knight is nearly dead. We will leave him to someone else and try to deal with this repop if we can. But we can't. We are running right into too many men with glaives. Our horse is definitely going to die soon. We have to get away from them. And there we see the elite pikemen really tearing up horsemen. And now the Dornishmen running along. I actually did upgrade some of our sergeants to mounted skirmishers, but I don't think that they are in this fight. But just slowly trying to go ahead and get all of the kills that we can here, help out our men, and of course these archers are the least likely to kill my horse of anyone on the map, and I don't like it when my horse dies. That makes things pretty uncomfortable and hard to reach people with my sword. That makes it unfortunate. And now, missing too many men, can't believe I missed all of that, and Tatters helping us out. And now a whole lot of men just dying all of a sudden and looks like we're going to be able to run into their archery repop and get all the kills that we could desire. And of course these hundreds of men, much better to deal with in this sort of positioning than in a castle, which is where they would have been if we allowed them to go, or at sea, which would take away the advantage of our numerous cavalry and actually play right into their greedy little hands. I call them greedy, the Lyseni, of course. They defeated Mir and took a lot of Tyrosh's land as well in that war, or managed to retake it, but now we are going to take the entire coast and naval region of the world, pretty much or of the known world, the exception being Volantis, which we've had before, but that is not even on our list of things to do this week. And I have been thinking, of course, that, well, we want to make a run for Westeros, but we have a ton of unassigned fiefs. We might actually want to go and take out Larath as well, and really put some pressure on the lords to try to join our side before we go ahead and assign fiefs. And many men of the Vale, of course, have still not changed their allegiance. I'm hoping to get a few of them. It hasn't been that long that the Vale has been defunct, but Major Mormont gets away. This Magister gonna go ahead and grab him. And we'll release John Umber because, hey, why not? And we will take the Heavy Knights as prisoners and other knights' men-at-arms count.
the others we were, are just going to leave for our allies. And now, to the siege. Uh, Lordly Pointy Kettle Hat. That is a phrase I didn't know I was going to say until today. Now you see that uh, that flint managed to get away, but... Well, he is going to have to report to the Archon that the Den of Skulls has been lost, because that is what's going to happen. And we lose 21 hand of proficiency, that's okay, I guess. And now, I'm going to go ahead, shapeshift into Gurner Pike, I suppose, and have this battle. What is the Den of Skulls like? All right. We recognize this architecture. We're just going to move our archers forward and revel in the awesomeness of Marcher Longbowmen. And getting several kills on their crossbowmen, but now just going to move down to easier targets. Try to get more mass killing going on with my archery as opposed to picking out high shots, but now looks like the rest of our archers showing up to battle, and of course marcher longbowmen are better than any other NPC longbowmen in the game, period. They are total badasses and entirely fearsome. Now, they don't have that great of armor. That spot goes to the Targs. My longbowmen are sort of a mix between great weapon skills like the Targaryens, but with lesser armor to make them balanced, and they're very expensive as well. I put quite a lot of thought into the Lost in Troops, as I have said so many times, <laughs> but... One of the things that I do not wish to do in this battle is charge my men up and die, and... Well, with only 50 killed on in the inside, it's not as if they are going to just give up and die immediately, but what we can do is move even closer and just hope to somehow get an angle on some of their heads. It's actually not a bad position for our enemies, but from this position here, going to be able to kill a few archers. They will step up and repeatedly be shot down, and that archer, or crossbowman rather, ducking a bolt, but... Somehow getting a headshot there, not going to claim I expected it to hit, but I was planning on hitting someone. And Marcher Longbowman cutting the cell swords down. Now, there might not actually be too many of them left, and what I'm going to do is the highly clever move of moving up here, and there we go. Fortunately, those misses able to be replaced immediately and just playing this ridiculous game of chicken here and hoping not to get shot by anybody's crossbow. But that is what a siege is like. It is archery punctuated by bits of ridiculous heroism like sticking your head up at a bunch of archers from far away and hoping that they're not going to be good enough to kill you. And there we go getting knocked out. And, of course, that means we have to leave. And now we're going to come back in again. And it was only a matter of time, of course, before we got shot right in the damn face. And we get our well-deserved comeuppance there. Going to wait a little while. And then go ahead. And apparently, Lord Selwyn of Tarth is with Kohor now. He has really gotten around. And Sir Felton Ironbreaker has a decent amount of HP, probably enough to take one headshot, and no more than one, but what we're going to do is go ahead and move our archers up forward once more, and as before, work on taking care of their archers. However, I think this time, yes, we're seeing that they are much less crowded, and probably down to some of their last archers after that last slaughter, and now... 
Yeah, we're not seeing that many crossbowmen at all on the wall. And nor skirmishers or anything like that. And... And yes, actually doing quite well here as far as things can be planned out. And taking out all of their men. I don't think we have a single wounded in this engagement yet. We don't. And 16 of them killed. Now that of course means that our enemies are mostly going to be stuff that's extremely difficult to deal with. But hey, that's why we do the job, right? And we're going to go ahead and move our archers up and hope that they will be able to take some good shots at these angles, just like I am, and get some kills. If they cannot, then, well, we will see what we're going to do about the other enemies, but I think I will try to kill the archers on the far side again, because I am not a man who learns his lessons, and what we're going to do is peek out our heads, and it's the crossbowman I'm most afraid of, but we miss him. And there we go. Able to actually... Okay, three more. Okay, taking six damage from that archer. But of course, he is not a crossbowman. Not nearly as dangerous as one. And now just going to... Oh no! Fall down and get knocked out. Because I am actually a super smart guy. And now going to take nine more hours to siege the Den of Skulls. Because I am being stupid and making very interesting decisions. But... It is all going to be okay. And now it will fall to Roderick to attack the Den of Skulls. And I'm pretty sure, actually, that... Yeah, they are probably about out of archers entirely. And we're just going to have this fight, I suppose. There are not enough men in the archery positions to even bother with, and what we're going to do is just try not to die when we come up top. And the queen is up here with us. That is terrible. Terrible for the queen. Don't die, Queen Lawston. Please don't die. We will count ourselves as a terrible companion if that happens, but she's there in the front trying to bash heads and probably being successful. But now that we're on top of the wall, I think we're going to be fine, and... And there's Queen Lawson getting taken out, and now we're at a decent position to be able to kill a lot of their sellsword squires and men-at-arms here. And I think we should maybe be able to avoid being knocked out, but going for a jump kill, and it was successful. Just too many men with warhammers got to try to back up somehow, and evading that man's warhammer with a jump. Totally ridiculous, but hey, he has super high athletics and agility. It is somewhat credible. And being able to take out that man-at-arms as he tried to hit me. And now going to be able to continue on with a bare sliver of HP to help our men to victory. And another jump kick from Roderick here. And falling down. Probably should have died there. But lucky now, not getting hit. And now, of course, too afraid to back out. Got to keep on trying for hits, even though, okay, there's the knockout that we were waiting for. And falling down, but of course, so close to victory. No point in backing out. We will just continue to fight them. And now, Arano Panrakos in there among them. No, that's not Arano. That is Lotharo Gindemis, I believe, my companion. And yes, it was. And he gets knocked out, but we're going to be able to bash some heads and not lose too many more men. And take this. And then... Well, then it is over to Lise to see what we can find there. And it should be quite instructive. But we're seeing a lot of great kills happening here from our companions up front. I think that's Garrett Longley, yes, but he gets knocked out. And... Medric Waterman, still up, and probably the only one of my King's Guards still up, but 
all of my men pretty much hung up on this ladder, and we are going to kill these spearmen. It's just going to take a little while, and, well, that is that. Pretty ridiculous how difficult it is to kill people when you have a height advantage on a stairway, but that's just the way that the game works sometimes. Men get very, very stuck on each other, and there we go. A knight getting kicked to the bottom, that might actually be what we need in order to get things moving, but maybe it will not be enough. Maybe they would all have died anyway, and there's less of the men in arms dying, and now for the slaughter. What we're going to have to do is unfortunately wait for our men to charge all the way over there to take out the men who are on top of this tower. Who... Well, how the fuck they get there? I see. And they are going to engage all of my men in single combat on top of this ramp, and it is going to be glorious. And apparently, your men will get stuck on... Never mind, there's another steep ladder on that side, so they're going to be fighting on two very steep ladders. And Carver is going to be up front with some other of my knights, and hopefully they're going to be able to take out these men, because if not, it's going to be pretty embarrassing. But... It looks like a ton of guys with warhammers, which means they will knock people out, but at least they won't kill them, and... That sellsword knight staying up for quite some time and then getting killed by the mounted Dornish archer, and now it looks like our men... Will they walk up to the top, or are we going to have to leave with four men alive? These are the big questions, and it looks like we are going to leave with four men alive, and that should be the end anyway, and it is. And some alright stuff, but nothing that matters to me. And now, the Den of Skulls is ours. And couldn't be happier about that. What we're going to do is, of course, have no rest. Except to go ahead and snatch up these sellsword knights and squires, I think. And then we're just going to make our way towards Lys and see what's going on there. Alright, here is Carl Vance and many more of them. We're going to hope to run them off and not fight them at sea, but it looks like actually we're going to have to fight them at sea. Which will be okay. We can force a fight and kill some of their mounted troops this way, and then we'll let the rest of them escape. We're going to go ahead and just choose Martin Snow here, and... Oops. Making a bit of a misstep with taking our weapon down, but it's going to be fine. All we're going to do is not even aim. We're just going to shoot right into this mass of troops where we know that we can hit someone at any moment until our men get across. But there's a Kingsguard cloak, so actually we need to move our attack backwards somewhat. And now a lot of men getting knocked out, but that is just what happens when you have a sea battle. And many, many men being lost to our enemies, but there are Northerners here, and they have maces when they are mounted units. And, of course pretty dangerous in general, and what we're going to do is just continue on killing and try to take out as many of their archers as possible. And accidentally killing a friendly sellsword knight that I thought was an enemy, so not going to do things like that anymore. And somehow getting that kill, do not ask me to make that shot again. Not gonna happen, but going to be able to kill a whole lot of their reinforcements here. And of course we took lots of losses, but hopefully they were mostly trash. And Alan Cargill gets a kill. Of course we don't have access to the backspace menu. There's the last one that we needed. And well
a bunch of trash troops it looks like wounded for Lord Caron, but a bunch of very high quality units as far as knights and the like go for these men. And what we're going to do now is, I think, leave and let them run away. We're going to move back a little bit and let the rest of our lords catch up with us. And now that we, we have the rest of our troops, we will be able to just go ahead and really put a hurting on them, make them wish that they did not come to sea today, and Major Mormont going to be totally caught out. We're going to isolate her, and John Umber will show up as well, and she is going to call us an impudent whelp. That is okay, man. That is just the anger talking. But there are a lot of sea battles to come here, and it looks like we are going to be forced to fight the Men of Lys at sea before we get them on land, and that's just the way of it. I don't want any of my bannermen to be caught out while we're having this fight, so we're basically just forced to get into this engagement, although it is not exactly what I had planned. And hitting Bar Barngar Perrin in the back, he moved too far forward. That's my story, and I'm sticking to it. And... Of course, a very bad way to get anywhere in Queen Lawson's kingdom is pissing Barangar Perrin off. But I think we're going to let Martin Snow have that one as a mulligan, and somehow getting that shot, not even going to try for another. Pretty shocked that I didn't kill one of my own men with it, but yep, yeah, definitely not going to try. And soon enough, we should get the final kill or two, and then... There we go. Able to take out, wow, seven northern knights, and so about 20 cavalry in general. And we will now leave that fight, leave them to get picked up by the others, maybe, and move forward, try to scare them off. And now John Umber trying to get onto land. Garland Terrell is a great man to catch out here on the water, so we're going to, wow, look at all the Lords of Lys. Well, what we're going to do is hope to catch them out somewhat, and never mind, we're going to back out here, and this is going to be absolutely massive. So, 1,238 men against our 768. The problem is, of course, that this is at sea, which is not ideal, but what's going to happen is a lot of men are going to die. And there's nothing we can do about it, except to continue on and be happy that we are taking out so much cavalry. And I think, actually, that I might seriously regret being caught out on this ocean. But we're just going to keep taking our shots at the sellsword knights up front, and I think the Archon is here recently regenerated, and that of course does not bode particularly well for us, but trying to get all the kills we can, and we have plenty of men here, and all we have to do is make sure that our player character gets about 15 or 20 kills per match, and then we should be fine. But really there are a ton of knights and squires that are getting cheaply traded as far as what we'd expect on a battlefield. This would be a very troubling force to deal with in any context, and that's a lord, and nope, I miss him. And there we go, Elon Santo taken out by my hand, and so many men, and almost running out of arrows, you almost never do that on a siege scene, but there's a man, Sir Garland Terrell, popping him in the head, and there we go, <clears throat> running out of arrows. Pretty ridiculous, but... I have faith that we did very well here, and we're seeing now a uh, reinforcement pop, and that means that, of course, we're winning the battle. Unfortunately, most of our men are not taking shots across the way, but some of the Dornish archers are able to get an angle, and so we're ending up all right. Yeah. 
and all of our men sort of stuck up there at the front, and I do not have enough arrows to do anything about it, so I'm just going to hope that we do well. And okay, now they're backing up and getting more into our range, and hoping that that will be the fatal flaw that leads to their demise, but at the very least, we're seeing our archers, there we go, take down some shields, take down some of their ranged men, and now it looks like we're finally going to get over the hump and make our way into their ships, taking out the last of these knights, men-at-arms, and crossbowmen for the win. It does no good to try to give your men commands on boats. They won't listen to you anyway. And Alan Cargo with the final two kills. And we're all very proud of him. And it looks like we have a lot of wounded men. And our allies, geez, with 45 casualties. However, able to take out 87 enemies, so that's something at least. And 22 self-sword knights among them. We could leave now, but what we're going to do is actually try to press our advantage and hurt these lords more. I think that this is the right move and we're going to be fine. We were able to take out one set, so we're going to ask our men to sacrifice a lot more lives, basically, and... And I wish I could get these headshots that I'm dreaming of, but instead I'm hitting mostly shields. That is sad, and something that I hope does not continue forever. And able to take out some of these squires, they are not heavily armored, so any body shot would do it, but... So many high-value targets, so little time to kill everyone in, and I almost killed an archer of my own. That is not what I want to do. Definitely don't want to make my men upset with me. Morale is very important on these long missions. And so many casualties all of a sudden. Of course, it's so dangerous to fight at sea for any faction. There's just really not a lot you can control, and you're definitely going to lose a lot of men no matter what. But apparently I have eight more arrows, so I'm going to have to try to start making them count. And never mind, my reinforcements have come in, so going to just take some awesome cheap shots at their men and now hope to run over the rest of our foes. What I'm going to do is not get anything from this. No, please move. And not getting any arrows, so I'm going to try to follow this sellsword knight and sort of weave back and forth, able to do it. And actually able to come around and hopefully save several of my friends' lives here. That is a man of Cloven Ashford, and now. The rest of our foes dying, gonna be able to take that arrow really quick, and Moat was gonna put it into the back of the leg of that knight for maximum damage, but didn't have to do it there. And, well, another victory, but at what cost? The cost very high in lower tier troops. 50 more casualties for our allies. But, of course, lots of them not so great. To put it in perspective, of course, we killed 16 more Sellsword Knights with 20 more Squires and a lot, okay, 87 for our enemies and, well, 60 for us in terms of casualties. And my only question is, should I go for war one more? But I think we're going to leave. Back out a little bit. Let the Lords of Least decide if they want to keep on moving forward or not. My men, unfortunately becoming a bit of cowards, and now we're going to be able to catch Korakot out. Never mind, no we can't. We're going to try to come onto the Isle of Little Rock, and if my men get stuck out at sea, they are getting stuck out at sea, and we cannot have that happen. We're going to be forced to have this battle against the Archon, and almost no one fit for battle, unfortunately. Which is not nice, but what we're going to do is sort of lament everything in the damn world and try for kills here.
so bad, and I just feel like our casualties are going to become immense, and Cyril and Aqua really stuck his head out where it should have been, and have all of my shots hitting an invisible wall, God damn it! and have to get up top and really wasting a lot of potential and a lot of arrows there and just trying to get our kills here. But really tense situation and the bad thing about our situation here is that we've called our bannermen but it looks like we actually might have to retreat and oh no one of our men trying to take a little bit too much initiative backing up and not at all having a happy time with that and what we're going to do is try to aim a little bit lower and get shots on these people because I think there's another invisible wall saving these men's lives not the visible wall called shields but another one and And now can we leave? There we go. Gonna go ahead and back up. Not see the fight to its conclusion, but rather be satisfied to, okay, kill a lot of guys. And unfortunately, we're still outnumbered, so we're just going to board the enemy again. And if we have to abandon them and basically abandon this whole campaign and run away, that is what we'll do. Not proud. Just realistic and... It looks as though the bannermen that we brought with us here are not going to be able to cut it. And we underestimated how quickly all of these Lords of Lease would respond. We have beat every single one of them out in the field in the last literal three games of daytime. But they have been able to respawn all of their troops, albeit a little bit more limited. Even from their respective factions that they no longer belong to, which is pretty curious. But I'm not going to, you know, criticize them for that. And should be criticizing myself for not killing these men, but now able to get more kills on these squires and halberdiers and so on. And just going to continue shooting till I run out of arrows, and then we'll probably back out. Because waiting is not as good as backing out is whenever we have decent tactics going on, and I think we do. And we're going to go ahead and... Oh no, wow! Almost drowning, and able to avoid that, thankfully. But... There we see the real kills start to mount up and 79 casualties for our enemies with just just 30 for us. So now the number is a little bit closer to each other and time to continue on on this battlefield once more. So we're going to make sure to walk up. We know you have to walk up and now just going to start breaking shields and faces. And not even going to say sorry about killing that guy. He was totally in my way. And so many of my allies' men here are dying, but, well, we had to save them. It had to be done. Otherwise, well, they would have just been taken captive, and that would have been very shameful since we invited them to come on this great war with us. And we're going to try to make it the best war that we can do. And... And I'm pretty sure that that is, yes, there we go, the heraldry of some other guy. And having that on shields is very useful in these battles, as it was no doubt in the real world. And now, going to be able to take out the last of the troops and happily win that battle. And once more giving much better than we got, doubling up on the kills pretty much. And now it is 290 versus 305. 
and of course nothing to do but board them again. We can't just leave him, the battle will continue, and so we are forced to jump in here with Serral and Bryce Carone helping us out and just trying to hit all of the crossbowmen that look like they are doing their job and after that of course to shoot everyone else and what a massive amount of deaths coming in for both sides of course and when you see them back there with their maces over their heads that's the best time to shoot them but still sometimes their shield can cover it depending on the angle that is the problem with fighting massive massive forces and I can't believe they still have knights after all of the knights that we've killed but I guess it is the Archon so he probably had about 50 of them if only we could take him captive that would make a very good end to this situation here and just killing as many men as we can but Wow, I thought I would be almost out of arrows. Apparently I have 11 more, so not able to move much, but going to kill these crossbowmen. And now out of arrows, so I think I'm going to back out, but no, our men are going to be able to clean up the rest of them, I think. So we're going to take the victory and the morale boost, and possibly renown, don't know, but... There we go. Coming in, and lots of sea battles here. Not actually getting the sea lease, but getting to kill a lot of men and have Bryce Caron and Sarah Lenaquo really make us proud with their fighting at sea. Of course, one of them got caught. They were all trying to run away. If they would have only followed me onto the island, we could have fought them with our horses and had a slightly better time of it. But, well, you cannot undo everything. You can only undo some things. And, of course... Wow, 87 killed for the enemy, and still 12 of them were knights. Now, finally, we are ahead of them in troops. We're going to expect to start seeing some Unsullied on the battlefield, if we hadn't already, but unfortunately getting pretty low in Lord Caron's set, and oh man, look at all of those crossbowmen. Really dangerous for us, and we're going to lose a lot of men here, but nothing to do about the but kill them and just so many crossbowmen and each of them capable of really taking somebody's head off but of course they can't really do that once they are in or into melee range but pretty difficult to do that on a boat and praising all seven of the seven that we still have one man with a bow and arrow that is fit for battle because otherwise this would have been much worse and we probably would not have had this battle and we probably would have had to run away and that would be depressing but instead we have a great and glorious victory over the forces of the terrible terrible Archon of Lys. He's probably not that bad of a guy I'm honestly only criticizing him because I'm about to take all of his shit and it will make me feel better afterward And there we go, the last of the kills coming in. And such happiness for us, and another 87 enemies taken out, no more knights for them, and now we are getting finally down to their last little bit, although with all of our troops here, we only have 100 or so men fit for battle. We might have to abandon this campaign, go heal up, get more troops, maybe take more men of Lise captive. We could make peace. We don't actually need Lise, but on the same hand, making peace when we've already taken almost all of their land. It's not really my character style, unless we intend to come back later with a much larger army and crush their faces, which, well, might be what we plan. Because these bannermen that I got were the ones that I could get on the fly. They are not even close to all of my forces. We have a huge amount of bannermen throughout the Crownlands and the Iron Islands who did not show up for this at all because they are way too far away to hear our ravens call and we will not feel bad about going back and grabbing all of them and then, well, we'll bring a few thousand men instead of just the 700 and I think that is going to be the plan. We're going to 
finish up these sea battles, and then back the hell off of Lys. Let our allies that came here go home, heal up a little bit. But of course, we aren't going to stop until we get this kill. Now, best case scenario is that we capture the Archon here, and that we're able to run him back to King's Landing, keep him prisoner forever, and laugh our way all the way to the Lyceni Bank. And instead, we're seeing a bunch of losses from Sellsword Archers, because that is just what happens in the game. Ranged men tend to trade well in close quarters, and we are just going to keep killing their archers, since the men at the front are more than likely just going to be spearmen, are going to be handled pretty easily once their shields break. And I think that is the last of our enemies. Now, please, please, please fucking let me get this Archon, because he has way too many men. And... Nope, we don't do it. And what we're going to do is, right now, chat up Lord Caron and... Tell everybody to go home. Now, I'm going to somewhat stay as a rear guard, but I don't want to fight, and I want all of them to run away, and hopefully that's what they will do, and that no one will be caught out. Well, some of my lords are going to get hit, and there's nothing I can do about that. What the actual hell? Okay, so apparently... Um, I am sort of lost at sea right now, and I'm in a terrible position, and accidentally said that I was going in as Queen Lostin, so not going to do that. Change companion, and now we're going to be Martin Snow, and still stuck out at sea, apparently making a very bad move, and now going to have to fight a lot of men. Not very advantageous, and... That is what restricted sea lanes get you. They get you a whole lot of sadness. And unfortunately, fighting a bunch of, against a lot of quality opponents here that were not present for our earlier killing, and I have the distinct feeling that I'm going to be taken prisoner. And let me tell you guys, I do not really like that idea, but at least it happened at a moment like this. when the war was almost won. And if I am able to get out of this alive, then, well, I'll be happy enough. But I'm pretty sure that I am slated to lose here because I am caught out at sea between a ton of Lyceni. Uh, so many of my men are hurt. Really a bad position for me. Too many of my men already caught out and in a lot of trouble. And I'm pretty sure I am far too outnumbered. Now we might be able to just squeeze it out and get a victory and live through this, but... Well, it's up in the air at this point. And we take 30 casualties. They take 105. We are still 144 against 267, so... Well... Looks like we are still fucked, boys, but time to take all of the shots. Kill all the people that we can. And at least some of our men are in a decent position here. We're going to kill their archers because they are a great danger and somewhat difficult for our men to deal with in the longer term and then continue on with our focus for killing their men at the front. Hopefully we killed enough of their elites. They won't have too many left, but 
of course, we don't have too many troops left. We can't trade them one for one or even two for one, and... Damn ship combat. Going to probably hand me my second loss. And now I'm going to go ahead, back out, and apparently 11 more casualties for our enemy, so that quite convenient, but not what I was expecting at all. And now 93 enemies dead in that battle, and only 17 men taken out of our fighting forces. Still don't have the option to leave. 126 against 174, so let's go and try to kill them once more. And it looks like actually we're down to a lot of levies, so we're going to be able to take these men prisoner. Definitely not letting them go again if we have the option. They have proved that their dedication to the enemy too great to set free. We might keep them nearly forever, in fact. But what we're going to do is go ahead and get the hell out of this battlefield now. And there we go. Managing to kill a whole ton of the enemy and quick retreats off of the battlefield smart moves at sea because the auto calculation apparently heavily favors your elite troops even though they would be at a terrain disadvantage so another cheesy way to try to stay alive but i don't think it's going to work for too long because of course these are not the only men at sea but trying to take all the shots i can and Really should have kept the other men with us, that would have given us a little bit of cushion, but unfortunately, being caught way too far out, and not going to be able to get away, I fear. But... Now, the last 24, slated to die, and... Trying very hard to not kill my own men here. And. There we go. I escape. We will take him prisoner. We will take him prisoner. And we will take him prisoner. A ton of men, men to take prisoner. And fortunately, we see that they had so many prisoners themselves that we are actually going to be able to make a fight of this pretty hilarious and now our army is going to be nearly regenerated off of all of the captives that they had taken and we will just hope that that will be enough and a couple relation drops that's fine and what we're going to do now is sort of laugh at our terrible luck, but... Apparently... We will ask him for the favor, but I don't know if we're going to be able to get away. And... He does not allow us the chance to escape, unfortunately. So we'll be down to our last 178 against their 410 to try to make a fight of this, and I am super sad about what is very likely to be my second loss. I overextended against the Lyceni, got caught out at sea, got confused on sea lanes, wasn't familiar enough with the terrain, and that is what is going to be the fatal flaw in my strategizing here. If, in fact, I lose, which I expect to, but stranger things have happened than victory under these circumstances.
and just trying to get these kills and missing too many men and now so many of their crossbowmen I think coming in and getting kills so really need to focus on them instead and able to get even more kills here but it, it just won't be enough I don't think we're going to be able to escape and unfortunately killing a cell sword men-at-arms one of those reinforcements that we got and we're just gonna go ahead and back up and unfortunately taking many casualties there 38 for their 77 we cannot trade that many and now time for another attempt and just the terrible terrible sadness of not being able to get away with murder and well we're still just going to continue a whole lot of sea battles and even if we are defeated I uh, will not rest until uh, well we'll probably actually might go to have peace with the Lyceni but I think the Queen lost him would get mad about about losing that we're going to just go get all of our men and attack them but not going to let them have it cheaply in any case And now just going to go ahead, back up, and 25 on our side for 95 on theirs. That's better, but still not great. And now we're down to 115, so only doubly outnumbered. Looks like there is going to be a ton of crossbowmen for us to kill, so we're just going to aim into the middle of the grouping and not worry about too much else except for that for a little while. Looks like an unsullied really making his way in the world really far forward and unfortunately dying for his efforts but we will remember him fondly at least we would if we knew a name for him but Grey Worm he is not he is just some dead guy now and unfortunately many more of our men becoming other dead guys and gonna go ahead back out now there we go and 17 for 88 that's a ratio that we can accept 98 against 150 now of course this is no guarantee that we're even going to be able to escape afterwards but fortunately able to really make a mark on them there charge in get a bunch of kills but deep in our listings are a lot of fairly mediocre men and we are killing so many there that I think actually it is about time to back out but there we go with the reinforcements I think the calc will work for us and that is the case and able to get a bunch of kills and now they still want to fight 83 against 79 and we're gonna be able to get away I hope And, well, this is just going to be us crushing a lot of people with arrows, and they are hopefully not going to be able to take out the Unsullied that I hope are still at the core of my troops. I, of course, have no idea who is left alive at this point. I just know that this war with the Lyceni went in a direction that I was not expecting it to go. So many of them that I defeated so recently, I thought that they wouldn't respawn in time to cause me a lot of trouble, but I was obviously extremely wrong about that. And now, six more men to go, but we are only 69 men fit for battle. Which means, basically, if anybody else runs into us, 
then we are a bunch of Unsullied away from utter destruction. And, well, the Unsullied are very good fighters. Sort of nerve-wracking. We are letting all of these men go to collect some favors later on, I hope. And now... Oh, man, are we going to get out of here? I think we are. This caravan trying to get back to Lee Sin. Oh, look at that! Being able to escape. After all of those sea battles, we're going to be able to get back to the Den of Skulls. We're going to be able to heal up. Oh, that was... Oh, man, that was so close. I did not think that I was going to be able to make that happen, but... Whoa. Whoa. I thoroughly expected the Lyceni to be able to capture me. They were not able to do this, and now we're going to be able to get to the Den of Skulls. We're not going to make that mistake again. When we come back across the ocean, we are going to bring so many men that they do not know what to do about it. And, oh, fuck me. That was way too close to losing. Whew. But there you have it. Apparently, didn't lose. And now I am going to take a fucking breath and a little bit of a break and come back in a little while, healed up with a plan to fight the Lyceni. Now, there's probably going to be a bit of a continuity break, unless they siege somewhere, unless... In that case, it will only be a little while, but in any case, I'm going to need to be traveling to the center of my kingdom in the Vale to get enough men to fight the Lyseni at sea. Thanks for watching and listening, guys. Hope you did enjoy.